Welcome to the black box. Ah, it's so scary, man. Welcome Interview. to the black box. Like, like initiation. It's an evil cult. Is that why you're wearing black? Uh, apparently, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> they sent me the memo. <laughs> you mentioned call there, and I, me- I remember thinking about your name the first time I heard it. Um, the bad guy. Um, why? For me, initially, I mean, it's like, oh, the bad guy, like cool guy like bad i mean bad you know at the time it's like even to now Sha, to be honest bad is like just this guy is cool like yeah. bad like badass you know um but then i thought it would be interesting because of the kind of artist i am you know because of the kind of brand that i have it would be cool to sort of put an interesting spin on it so i decided to spell it differently so my bad is spelled b-a-h-d and it stands for something yeah. Brilliant and highly distinct. Mm. That has me. Girl, girl. <laughs> <laughs> highly. Yeah, highly, very highly. Um, I notice, I see files a lot now without the bad guy. Is that intentional? Mm, or well, it's just... Not necessarily. It's just like short form. You know what I'm It's like, call it by full name. Falar and Falano. Or just saying Falar. Yeah. You know? Yeah. Fair enough. So how are you doing, man? What's 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 up? How's 2020 treated you without ah. going into too much detail? <laughs> <laughs> it's difficult to talk about 2020 without going into too much detail. Very difficult to talk about 2020 without getting, without feeling sad, you know, without feeling down, without feeling like I'm, I'm going through something so rough, man. Yeah. So it's, it's been, I mean, I think everybody, everyone would agree by far the roughest year <laughs> yet, <laughs> just in terms of everything. Yeah, everything. At least in my lifetime. Yeah, you know, it's it's just crazy, man. Have you survived as an artist? I, I, I've had this conversation with a couple of people in the industry saying, you know, oh my, I never see shows since March. Ooh. People haven't performed anywhere. Um, I mean, thanks to the fact that people have, have been at home for a bit, so there's been some streaming income. But I mean, mm. it's nothing compared to what it, the year could have been. Hmm. Really you are kind of lucky. You do some movies on the side as well. But uh, as an artist, how has it been? <laughs> <laughs> have you performed anywhere this year? <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> this question you're asking, I'm laughing because you laugh so as not to cry. <laughs> Bro, this thing is rough. Oh. It's very rough. It's very rough. I know a lot of my colleagues would have been pushed to the wall, to the very wall. You know, I can only be grateful. I can only be thankful to God, you know, for what, um, or the way I, I, I have been, or I had been up until this year, been able to uh, build my brand to an extent that I already had some things guaranteed for me. But when you don't have some sort of guarantee of income, and this work that we're doing is the most unguaranteed <laughs> In terms of income. So when you don't sort of have that guarantee, then this kind of year, ah, you would have been down. I don't see debit a lot. Debit, 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 <laughs> minus, minus. <laughs> Coincidentally, towards the end of last year um, was when I moved in, in, into a new place. Uh, well, no, was when I uh, started to acquire um, the new place. Congrats. Thank you so much. We'll still wash it. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. When I started to acquire, you know, because I eventually moved this year, yeah. But, you know, then because of that, there was a heavy cost that you're already on my shoulder, you know, coming into this year. Ha! Huh, I now enter into this year. <laughs> and the plan was to recoup this year. Everything now happened like this. In fact, my brother, ah, I really feel it though. But I just, like I said earlier, I just want to thank God for the guarantees uh, that I already yeah. kind of had. What are these guarantees? Um, for an artist like myself, endorsement deals. Endorsement deals played a huge part <laughs> in those guarantees. Endorsement deals. Um, st- streaming income, we can count it. We can count it. Oh, yeah. We can count it actually. <laughs> just a one, yeah, because, yeah, be- also because it's in foreign currency, 
is in foreign currency. Which is very important. It's, oh, especially at this time. <laughs> <laughs> and I say, oh, yes, we have to count it. You know, so streaming income, um, you know, but everyone knows that for an artist, shows, the shows on the go, that is your most bah, 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 stream of income. Yeah. So, you know, when that all that is just snatched away from you, it's, it's, a, bit, it's a bit violent. Yeah. 2020 is a very violent year. Does that make you worry about the kind of work you do? If something like this could shake um, your pocket so strongly, mm -hmm. you, like for the future, it could be something else. <laughs> if anybody is an artist and he tells you that he doesn't worry about this work we are doing, he's <laughs> telling you lies. It's very worrisome. <laughs> the fact that you can wake up any day and you're not popping anymore. <laughs> you can wake up not not by your own doing, you know. Maybe there are some people are sucking your creative dreams from somewhere. <laughs> you can have a couple months back to back where you don't have that thing or that one jam that hits bam. You know, you can have that. It can even be up to years. <laughs> so if anybody tells you that he's doing this work we are doing and he doesn't worry that anything can happen at any time, and there's new people coming up, so many talented. Amazing new people that you yourself you listen and say, What is this? <laughs> There's people coming up. So, I mean, if you're not there, no one's gonna look for you. It's a very, it's a very, very tough job that we are doing here. Yeah. Mm, very tough. Let's let's take it back now and build up to why you decided to do this thing you're doing, considering the fact that it's a tough job. Um, were you born here? I wasn't born into music. Or really any kind of arts, to be honest. Um, I just grew a love for it. Um, you, um, I, I was born, of course, as everyone probably knows, <laughs> into a family of lawyers. My mom and my dad um, are both lawyers in the same firm, Falano and Falano's Chambers. <laughs> Actually, I'm Falano, I'm Falano because <laughs> my sister, exactly, my <laughs> older sister is a lawyer as well. Um, so <laughs> growing up, it was like almost like this is the path that was carved for you. And yeah. for me, obviously, as a as a toddler, as a child, your first set of heroes are your parents. And um, you know, I saw the way they lived their lives, you know, very, very selflessly, very, you know. Um, very gracefully, you know, I wanted to be like them. So I said, well, I'll go to school and, and study law. Yeah. And, you know, you I knew from You knew from early on that that was from what you were going to do. From early on, and it did not help matters that I don't know mathematics. Understand? <laughs> so <laughs> anything. <laughs> <laughs> if I would know F9, oh, F9, F9, F9. That's the only reason I studied law. <laughs> Trust me. <laughs> oh, yeah. So anything scientific <laughs> subject, yeah, yeah. no, my dear. No, Happy that's to not meet you. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Let me shake your hand. Uh, my colleague, you know. <laughs> so it was um that was you know kind of like the path that was carved for me, and then I went to um I uh, went to sec I finished secondary school in Oshu State. Or so were you born in Lagos? I was born. I was born in Lagos. Primary school in Lagos. Saint Leo's Catholic School in Ikeja. Oh, Saint Leo's. Saint Leo's Catholic School in Ikeja. Um, secondary school, Olashiri International School, Oshu State, and then university. I went. Uh, I went to the UK. Okay. So it was at it was at university point that I travel out. Yeah. <laughs> you know, travel out duration of about four years. Four years, uh, tw two thousand and six to two thousand and ten. Oh, okay. Came back, went to the Nigerian law school in Abuja, um, and then after about part one, stayed there, completed my this thing. I was officially called to the Nigerian bar <laughs> as a barrister, a solicitor. <laughs> In uh, February 2012. Mm. Yeah, February 2012. Um, yeah, so, you know, got my qualification. At the time, throughout this entire time, throughout while I was, um, even while I was in uni, you know, I was, I was already doing music. You know, I was trying to push, trying to push my stuff, um, you know. So even w when I got back to Nige, I was, I was on streets. You already knew. I was, I was on street. We'll, we'll get to the music part first. Because um, <laughs> I'm very interested in that growing up part. A lot of us um, know your father. Mm -hmm. um, I'm, a, I'm an 80s baby. I knew the military era. 
So there were certain names that always popped in our heads, you know, as our so hero. What's the date of birth again? <laughs> something around 80 something. You are sure yourself. <laughs> Let me just give you a clue. I, I was called to the bar seven years before you. So that would give you an idea. Seven. <laughs> <laughs> Let me do violin for Only you. Only seven years. <laughs> oh, cool. So yeah, um, I mean, growing up, you knew your father, but at what was there points where you realized, okay, this guy is not just dad? When did you realize that he, there was something different? Maybe, maybe, maybe secondary school. Maybe secondary school because initial years, initial years, I didn't really have a clue what was going on. Yeah, you know, I didn't have a clue what was going on. Um, throughout nursery and primary, there'll be times where. The military will just come, you know, they'll take my dad from yeah, the house. From the house. Really? And we'll and just be at home. We will be at home. We'll, he'll be gone for a while. He'll be gone for a while. And at the time we didn't really understand. We would, would ask my mom, Where's dad? And she would say, Oh, he's traveled. Did you notice in her something different whenever they took him no not necessarily but as a child you're not that observant yeah <laughs> you know she would say he's traveled i know i'll we'll accept it i mean because yeah she can't be lying to us he's, he's probably traveled how often did that happen quite often quite often um they were frequent maybe not too long spells uh but they were they were frequent so um when he's coming back he'll buy rabina or lucozit for us <laughs> Are you from police station <laughs> or from jail? No, on the way back, <laughs> it ring, maybe we'll ring, 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 for us. I can never forget. And, you know, once we collect that and we see him, the joy is so overwhelming that, you know, we don't really ask too much, too many questions. And, yeah. you know, at that age as well, you don't really know what's going on. It's just like, hey, daddy's back. <laughs> yeah. You know, we know there's some sort of celebration around the house as well. Um, but we didn't know what was going on. It was not until later, later, later that I was understanding that this man <laughs> is fighting was consistently being detained, being harassed continuously and consistently. And every time this man came back out, this man will continue in that same light that got him arrested. <laughs> I saw the fearlessness. Little, little. I saw the bravery. I saw the, the courage. You know that you can't really compare to anything. So when you found out, did you fear for him, or were you like in admiration? Because I would be afraid. Like that, can you slow down? I was more in awe than anything else. Like who is this Superman? <laughs> You know, I was more in awe than anything else. And um, then I started to come across people, like so many people, you know, just randomly. And they'll say, what's your name? I say, oh, Falari, Falari what? Falari Falano. Uh -uh. Is it the same Falano? And everyone almost kind of had a story of how he helped them here. He helped them win this case about, uh, you know, about when they were being harassed here. When, you know, their fundamental rights were being breached here. How he got you out of this, got this person out of this. So I started to see more and more of a hero, you know, growing up. So that really, really um, rubbed off on me, I think. Definitely. Yeah. I want to talk about your mom because, one, everybody knows your dad. You also talk about your dad a lot. You have also sort of done stuff with your dad. Your mom is very sort of behind the scenes for the most part, but it looks like she also bore the brunt of a lot of this. Yeah, I mean, I don't think it's like she's behind per se, but yeah. if you're married to Barista Femi Falano, <laughs> S.A.A., I mean, <laughs> you know. Um, my mom is also a women's rights activist, you know, so she's very much, you know, in, in fight for your rights, very much, you know, out there. She has a, she has a, a non-governmental organization called... Uh, um, uh, women empowerment and legal aid so they they uh they help rescue victims of domestic violence you know they um help women that just might be going going through tough times and just need need that bounce back you know so there's a lot of um uh there's a lot of 
sort of fighting for people that she's she's also been doing. But like I said, in a way, I'm married to <laughs> married to the it's Leonard a Silk. It's a lot. <laughs> <laughs> it's a lot. It's a lot to catch up with. Yeah. Um, but I I love my mom. I I admire my, my mom on another level. You know, like you like I was telling you earlier on. She's the one that would tell us that oh he's traveled. Yeah. You know he'll be back soon. So she was strong enough. Strong, so so strong as to as to convey the message of what was going on to us in a way that would make us patient enough and even strong enough to be patient all through this. You know, st- strong enough to to encourage a man. You know, a lot of it's very easy, like you said. You know, you you would have been afraid. So it's very easy for anyone in that sort of uh, situation to be like yeah we, we should it's, okay. Away. it's okay <laughs> you will not keep shots <laughs> <laughs> but you know to continue to encourage the man continue to go in this light you know and um the way i've seen my parents um the way the family has sort of grown up it's it's like a perfect picture you know, it's like a perfect picture. Of course, a lot of fights here and there. You are when two lawyers are married to each other. <laughs> what do you can't expect? imagine? <laughs> <laughs> but like when you see them together, it's 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 hilarious, man. It's oh, bro, man, it's comedy, bro. It's comedy, bro. Like it's so funny. It's so funny. I'm just like genuinely entertained in my in my own house, <laughs> in my own family house. Oh, I'm gonna get to that because I've always wondered where the <laughs> funny files came from but uh, um <laughs> how many siblings do you have two sisters um you have two sisters yeah is there anyone who's like really chill or are you all I the think, same way i think i might even be the most chill oh <laughs> <laughs> just <for Christine. laughs> i think i might be the most chill my siblings are crazy like this whole the, the whole funny lingo um yeah it's a thing in your house but i thought yeah uh-uh. wait wait wait. <laughs> do your parents do this <laughs> okay <laughs> my parents for the longest time did not even understand what we were doing like why are you people talking like this type thing like you know for parents it's almost like you don't want you don't want your children to eventually now be talking like, like what are they doing you know but for us it was just jokes you know we're just being funny like we would we would hear sort of people talk like that and we'll just like make jokes about it or yeah. like you know as children now you know so there was like a whole f- an entire fa- phase where myself and my sisters used to like just joke around a lot talking like that and i didn't even know what it was sort of carving in me yeah you know but eventually this turned out to be something that i i used in a way to construct art <laughs> you know it, it turned out to be a gem mm-hmm. and yeah that's that's pretty much it i i, I ask that because uh, the one thing i've always known about you is your confidence is very obvious and it looks like it's come from a home where there's a freedom to just be and uh, express yourself regardless of what it is you want to say. Is that the kind of home it was? I would say yes. Yeah. I would say yes. I would say yes. Yeah. There was no shutting anyone down regardless of age or the fact that you're a kid or anything. <clears throat> you mean like talking to your elders uh-huh. in a rude way? <laughs> Are you crazy? <laughs> of <laughs> course not rude. You want to shut flag in? <laughs> <laughs> no. Uh, my, my, my mom... Ah, disciplinarian. Eh, you don't try nonsense. You don't try nonsense. You know, but if it came to like real life issues or like, oh, this is what I want to do with my life or this is what I want to do. I, I don't think there was th- any like resistance per se yeah. from my parents. Uh, you know, the, there was one time when I was in secondary school when <laughs> a teacher reported me to her. I was writing lyrics when I was supposed to be reading, you know. She came on visiting day and gave me a dirty hot slap, you know, in the front of the girls' hostel. Um, <laughs> That's a luxury. <laughs> yeah, you know, luxury. Um, that was a bit of an embarrassing moment. <laughs> but that wasn't from a place of don't do this thing that they said you were doing. It was just focus on your books. That's what I put here for. 
at that time. So at the time when, of course, I had grown a lot more, and I said, oh, this is something I really know, and I'm serious about it. Okay, okay, cool. All right. Do your thing. <laughs> you know, and when, when I said I wanted to be serious, serious with it, it was like, ah, never going to stop you. you. You can do what you want to do. Yeah. Um, but are you sure? Ah, so, okay, what about the Lord thing? And, you know, do you want to be doing the two on the side? I said, okay, I'll do that. I mean, at that point, I don't have choice. It's not like I've blown. <laughs> <laughs> so I'll be doing the two. So I was actually, it was the time I was living double life. Yeah. Lawyer by day, rapper by night. You were working at his firm? Yeah, I was working at my dad's firm. So, I mean, I think that's probably the only reason why it was um, easy for me to to kind of do um, because he would understand that, you know, there was that other aspect of my life that I was trying to keep alive. Yeah. And, um, you know, very gracefully so as well. Um, yeah. Was was there any part of your upbringing that you would call difficult? Or your childhood? Not to my knowledge. Yeah. Not to my knowledge. So you would you call yourself a privileged child? I would definitely call myself a privileged child, yes. When did you realize that? I realized privilege. Mm, I think I realized privilege in Olashuri. Okay, how so? Um, Olashuri is a good school. For me to be there. Is uh, is you know what they used to call international school. Uh -huh. And this is our colonial mentality. <laughs> How many <laughs> flags were in front? <laughs> Get to that. USA, UK. <laughs> I think UK. Maybe UK. <laughs> you know, it's a national school, but by standards, you know, I, I got in and I, you, you just see the way things are being run and you just feel like you're in a good school. Yeah. And I think maybe that was when I realized that, you know, my parents are probably paying a lot to keep me here. Yeah. Um, you know, so they probably have a good amount of money, yeah. decent, you know at the time but now thinking back earlier days i don't necessarily it's just because of, of course it's younger days so your memory of those times aren't so vivid but i don't remember the sort of space in which we existed being so so luxurious or so grand you know because we lived in there was time we lived in k2 you know there was time we lived in ikeja um Ikenja, I think, is a cool one on your side. There was a time we lived in um, Ojodu, Ogba. You know, so we've, like, it's it's sort of been like a trajectory. Yeah. It's sort of been like a trajectory. But it's just that these initial times were early days of my life. So I was so in that aware. didn't necessarily aware. notice anything. Yeah, exactly. But yeah. it definitely has been a trajectory. Just a bit of uh, an aside. I've always wondered, wondered, you know, especially when uh, I would read. You remember Tell Magazine? I remember like, Tell. Yeah, and I would see, you know, Femi Fallon or Gani Fawemi or Lisa Agbakoba. And I used to wonder, okay, these guys are fighting and they're getting arrested and they're getting tear gassed. But I just always wondered, when they hang out, what are they gisting about, <laughs> you know? <laughs> did you ever see, like, the Ghanis and, you know, the Odisas with your pops <laughs> hanging out? What did they talk about besides Nigeria? Was it just Nigeria they talked about? <laughs> I don't know, it's just personal curiosity. <laughs> I, I mean, at that time, I guess I was a lot younger as well, so I didn't really focus yeah. too much. But I just remember Ghani used to call my popsy. Femko, Femko. Like, <laughs> <laughs> I remember that like so vividly. Femko, Femko. I felt, like, you know, that was like his way of greeting uh, my dad. God bless his soul, by yeah. the way. You know, Chief, Chief Gany me. Yeah. Um, such, such a great man. Such, such, a, such a superhero as well. You know, these men were fighting. I talk about, you know, all these men we used to read about that were um, activists and fighters. And did we you know you also used to read about Adam Soshiamole? Yes. Oh, mm, that's interesting. <coughs> we'll, we'll get there. Yeah, we'll get there eventually. <laughs> As we go along, let's go to London now. You moved to London when? Um, to the UK in in two thousand and six. Okay. At this point, did you know you wanted to do music already, or you were still not sure? Because you said growing up, law was it? Mm, law was it? No, law was it? And going to university was yeah, going to study law. I think going to study law, or going to be a lawyer, going to be a lawyer. Okay, going to be a lawyer. Yeah, music was still sort of just a pastime. Yeah, because it, music started in secondary school. Music yeah. started in secondary school, but just like 
hobby. You know, I really yeah. enjoy. Everybody this used thing. to mime on stage. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Social ah, nights. Let me know. Don't get me started. <laughs> Social nights. Don't get me started about <laughs> secondary school days, bro. Like it was a friend of mine. You know, he used to rap. I, I just heard him one day. I was like, I'm gonna let me join you. Let's form a group. And well, that's how we form group. Everybody bro. formed the group. <laughs> secondary school. Form group. The school boys. You know, we started performing variety show. We had groupies, oh, like babes. Uh -uh. Uh -uh. <laughs> it was mad, like it was mad. Um, so th that that was when I started to say, how come all this thing is nice, so. But then going into uni, I still didn't know how serious it was. Yeah. But probably like my second year in uni, and that's when I was like, come, this P, I actually really enjoy this thing. And um, so you went to the UK. Yeah. You were studying law, but were you? still doing music oh, were yeah. you performing or you were just writing what was it everything recording? everything writing recording and performing so it'll be like university events you know maybe acs yeah. um, excuse me there was this thing uh that there or there is this thing uh, it probably still exists uh some sort of society you have within uni in in the uk they call the acs afro-caribbean society so kind of like the black people shower, yeah. you know what year was this this since since since, since I entered in, in fact my foundation year. As in what year? Two thousand and six. Okay, two thousand from two thousand and six onwards. Yeah. yeah, that was my foundation year. You know, from then I was already still you know writing, recording, and releasing music. This was when MySpace was popping. <laughs> so I have a MySpace account. You know, I'd upload my music there. Yeah, just send it out. Social social network, um, Facebook, all those things. Was there anything about Nigerian music at the time that was? At the time, you want to do this? At the time, because I'm guessing that was Plantation Boys. No, 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 no. Oh, that was actually 2006. 2006, exactly. We're exactly. coming to the recent time. We're coming to uh -huh. this is the band, actually. This is the band. This the the more band. hits. <laughs> this was more hits, bro. Yeah. This and was too baba. Uh, this was yeah, more hits. Yes, yeah, of course, too baba. More hits at the prime. Yeah. You know when every every young boy would would, would be like, oh more. These guys were yeah. just like the idols, you know? And um, I remember the band came to perform at the University of Reading one time. And I had literally just got into my foundation year. Um, 2006, yeah, so I would have been 16. Came to perform. Came to perform. It was, I heard it was mad. I, I didn't make it for the show. I think I arrived uni late, so I just missed the show. They were not giving me the gist. So it was mad, you know, everything shut down everywhere. I was I was almost crying. I, I could have missed such a show, <laughs> you know. Yeah. So, so that was, was it, that era. Yeah. Yeah. So was there anything about them? Because I mean, the band Mohits, of course, were massive. P Square, Two Face. These were the guys who were, you know, running things at the time. Was there anything about them, or was it just your passion that it was, was more the, pulling you? The, the 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 kind of music, kind of music they made, and um, the the way that they had sort of positioned themselves. You know, Mohits was a was a brand. Like, you know, everybody knew about the Mohits crew. You know, how Don Jazzy would whisper to the band, and the band would go, huh? Fla oh, shit. <laughs> you know, everybody yeah, like, caught the fever. On, like, what is going on with this guy? The swag. It was so... <laughs> it was so intriguing yeah. they, to see. I remember there was a there was a, a show, Taman Gang. I'll never forget the name of that venue. Taman, Taman Gang in London. This must have been 2007 or so. They to see came to perform as like headline act for the event. I opened, I opened the show like you know upcoming artists. You know just wanting to get get my music heard. You know there's a photo I saw from that day recently, and I was like ah, crazy. I, you know I looked so <laughs> young, innocent, just wanting to to get heard at the time you know that that was it for me yeah yeah so music started coming into the mix for you you said in your second year yeah so in my, in my um i mean since, since my very first year but then in my in my second year it was probably when i said let me do this thing professionally okay like let me let me take this serious and take it to the next level um you know that coupled with the fact that you know this gentleman this uh, young friend of mine <laughs> who i <laughs> Who I uh, call fondly call Aboki the bad guy, Aboki Sule. <laughs> he was a, he was a uni he was a uni in in the US at the time. He would call me on uh, MSN Messenger. That, that was always popping then. <laughs> MSN Messenger. He would call me video call me. This guy would just be giving me yarns, gist like this guy. Let's start a company, man. <laughs> 
He's one of those guys. <laughs> Bro, you, do, you, do you know what you have? Let's start a record label, man. Let's do this. We're going to be like like Jay-Z and, and Damon Dash. You, uh, <laughs> man, at that time, I was like, guy, just let me rap and record. What are you <laughs> Let me just record and release. Let the world say they like it and, you know, let money come from it. If money, What's this one saying? You know, I think at the time then, after a lot of constant calls and this guy would just talk and talk and talk i then started to think about what he was saying you know started to see something in what he was saying and then at that point in time we're like oh yeah now let's do it you know let's start a company together some sort of partnership you know you're gonna put some sort of investment down for me to to um to get to to properly professionally record my stuff and then take it to next level oh yeah now let's do it so he did you know, we started Bad Guys Entertainment. You know, we still exist till date. <laughs> um, we started that and, you know, he, he put some... some. Um, so you chose your name, this bad guy? Did, yeah, I did. Okay. I, I, so we, we put, um, put... He put some funds down for me to properly record my stuff, you know, and, like, start pushing. You know, we did, uh, like, a mixtape, properly packaged, did hard copies. I remember that time, 2009 came back to Nigeria to like push it on radio and stuff. And um it was an experience. <laughs> How so? <laughs> and what did you record? Is this still out there? My brother. <laughs> I love the songs. What I would My brother. No, no, it's not even the music. I mean everybody always looks back at the music from early days and like cringe. Yeah. But it's about what we experienced what trying to experience? push the music here in night. Just coming in two thousand and nine, young boys from Jand, we don't really know about the workings of things. I remember going to radio stations and like you know they go, they go see ah, uh, uh, you get mistaken, eh? Uh, what I was say, bro, guys, this thing is hot. I remember one, one particular meeting I'll never forget in my life. <laughs> never forget in my life. Um, got there and uh, we're, we're like discussing with the person. This person is an uh, on-air personality from from that time. Like, oh, he was, uh, Aboki was talking to, and he was like, yo, this is my artist, man. He's so dope. Like, you know, he's good. This is his new mixtape, but I want you to. Why <laughs> did <laughs> Make I finish. <laughs> we want you to spin it on radio. Please just give us rotation your support. Basically, I was like, don't finish. <laughs> uh-huh. And you know, you know the language we really speak for here now. Oh, wow. And then Aboki was like, oh, yeah, yeah. He speaks all the languages, English, no. Yoruba. <laughs> Yoruba pigeon, everything he mixes everything. <laughs> they, they look at like this. Kill the lens, oh God, the language. <laughs> Drop it. Wait. And that's when we started to realize that oh um, that's really the language, yo. Yeah. That and was you, the awakening, the rude awakening. Very rude one. And uh, this time I was still a student. I was still studying. I just said, okay, there's this project I have, let me even try and just put it on radio, let's see how... We, I'm still studying, they're still giving me pocket money, talk less of whether I want to wish money to push wish music. Do you get what I'm saying? So I was still studying at the time, it was just like, ah, I'm on. Ah, please, we, are, we don't have much, but this is what we're able to gather, shall. just help us, whatever you can do. You know, at the time, there was a record I had on that, uh, on that mixtape called Shakara that I had just organically gone sort of viral at the time and you know that was because it was on, on that song it was kind of when i introduced this character this raz you know lingo and um it was there all through the entire song and everybody was just like what is this <laughs> like who is this person you know so um so that was organically kind of doing well at the time um yeah but it still wasn't anything like a big break or anything yeah um not until long after not until long, long after did the actual big break now come. Yeah. yeah. So you you left. When were you done with school? Finished school 2010. 2010. Came did back you, to did Nigeria, come back immediately. Straight. Okay. Did law school. Went straight to law school. Started working say 2011, 2012. Mm, uh, NYC immediately after that, and then started working. You were still dreaming of this music thing. So before we get to that, when you started this music thing, first year, second year, um, did your parents know? Yes, now. Because I know you've always said they supported, but did they know from the start? Mm -hmm. 
and you knew they would be fine with it. You knew from even secondary school. Yeah. I told you about the incident where um the teacher reported me that I was writing yeah, you know, lyrics to a song yeah. when I was meant to be reading. So they knew that there was some sort of interest in this thing, but what was your first sort of response? Nothing, just like just ah, yeah. okay. You know. So it was always just no, never always never like don't do this. Never. Yeah. Never ever at any point. Never. You know. It was like, eh, okay, cool. Yeah. You know? And then um but I guess they just thought, okay, he just like, enjoys it. It's just a hobby. Um and then when it started to get serious, eh, like when I told them that oh I want to take this thing seriously. Okay, serious. I was gonna ask, did you have a proper yeah, like yeah. okay? Like this is what I want to do. Yeah. When was yeah. this? This was after uni and um after uni. Yeah, after uni. I think even while still in law school safe. You know saying, hey. Okay. Well, why don't you finish your studies and then be doing both and see how it goes? Yeah. And I said, Okay. I will do it exactly that. And I did exactly that. And that was the point where I was living the double life, you know, lawyer by day, rapper by night. And I was roughing it, my brother. I was roughing it. Finish from the office, fire down to Ireland. Understand? I can be changing as I'm driving, say. <laughs> <laughs> changing as I'm driving, bro. There was one thing that they used to do then. I, mean, I think they still kind of do now, Sha. But <laughs> at that time, what this thing was is like unbelievable. Industry night. Oh, industry night. Industry night at that time. If you are not performing there, nobody's hearing you. Nobody's hearing you. Wednesday night. Bro, I, so I, I still have that vivid memory <laughs> driving from office, <laughs> going to make sure I can make it for industry night to perform, to just to get heard. Yeah. So they could just hear me. When did you start feeling heard? Started feeling heard when. In, in like 2009, was it 12 or 13? 12 or 13, around that kind of time, Sha. When I got my first gig for one millionaire. Eh? The first call, oh, you know, the, um, some people want you to come and perform in a wedding in Abuja. Yeah, they are hearing me in Abuja. Okay, cool. Eh, how much do you want to pay? One what? V what? <laughs> <laughs> you see how much? So I'm coming. Don't worry. I will book my own flight. I'm, I'm on the next. What, so, what song was out at this time? At this time, I had a song called High Class. Um, I had a, I had a song called Currency. I had Cool Party. I had you know I had released a few singles. Yeah. You know, apart from mixtape from back, I released a few singles, but I hadn't even dropped my first album yet or anything. Yeah. So for me, it was like, eh. yeah. But my, my at the time, I think maybe my biggest song was. Probably a song called High Class. I remember High Class. Yeah. I, I, I remember the first time, I don't know if it was the first time I met you or the first time I saw you perform. 2013, 2014, I can't remember exactly. It was a bank that had an event at uh, what was Intercontinental, now Lagos Continental Hotel. Mm. I was hosting and uh, they were like, oh, Faust is going to perform. I'm like, hmm. <laughs> like many people just judged, like, Another rich kid on the block who's going mm, to just mm, come and mm. do one year run away, <laughs> you know. And I remember seeing you perform that day, and I was like, hmm, "There's probably something different um, about you." Did you feel judged a lot because of what your background is? Initially, yeah. Initially, yeah. Um, they just thought, ah, you know, no man, like you said. Huh? Yeah, you don't need them. You don't need this music. <laughs> we just can't do, bro. <laughs> you just want to do. You don't need them. You know, but your drive. Do you feel judged by fellow artists? Not necessarily. Me, I'm. I think I'm very oblivious to like yeah. to like people's maybe like. And I, I, I can <laughs> see that you're very. I don't know. And it's not in a bad way. Like yeah, you're just very, I just don't. Yeah. Yeah, thank you very much. It's more a defense mechanism. You know, me, I just don't, like, I'm just focused on my own. No. Oh, so you don't even like me? I don't know. Sorry. Do you get, like, so I just, I'm just very oblivious to, like, things like that. So I don't really observe from my fellow. Me, I do my own, I go. I do my own, I go. And me, as a person, the kind of person I am, yeah. a lot of people find it hard to believe, but I'm just a chill guy that just likes to chill in his own space. I'm actually a shy person. 
You know, and usually when I say people are like, oh, <laughs> they are even laughing. How can you? No, stop. How can you be a shy test? I am. Uh, but how can you be a shy test? <laughs> <laughs> but I am. Uh, <laughs> and it's just because this is the work I'm doing. I have to unlock another side. You know, I have to unlock another. And no, no artist can tell me that they don't feel the pressure at well, you know, when you get to a point where you're being pushed to the edge, back to back to back to back. No artist can tell me that they don't, they don't feel the urge to find something extra. Whether it be a substance <laughs> or anything, to find something extra to keep you going because you're yeah. under that kind of pressure and that pressure you have to keep going. You know, whether it's the pressure to be creative or to perform, whether it's the physical, what it physically requires of you, you know, sometimes where it's like back to back, you're on the road, you're the, whether it's like, I'm just sad today, but I have to get on that stage and they have to feel like I'm happy. How will I do that? You know, it's just all sorts of pressure. Um, yeah, man. Yeah. <laughs> uh, talking about finding things, because the skits came also sort of early in your career here um when did that was that a conscious decision did it just happen yeah you know i was telling you earlier about how you know with my siblings we sh we yeah. used to like you know joke around and stuff and how did i even discover that this was a gem a gemstone <laughs> <laughs> i was on holiday with my family let's so get this broadcast on <laughs> bbm <laughs> back then yes so <laughs> BBM. i can't forget i can't forget <laughs> I was on holiday with my family this time, casually in, um, I think it was Paris. In Paris, um, you know, I remember clearly, I think I was using an iPad at the time. Who still uses iPad? <laughs> to record. <laughs> to record for Instagram. <laughs> I used to use two and two it, my brother. Our uncles at weddings. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, anyway, so um, at the time, you know, we we're just joking as we used to. And then one of my sisters was recording, and I was like, yo, hello. Please, I've escaped to Europe. I'm not coming back to Africa. I'm now based in European country. Nobody should contact me. <laughs> Nobody should contact me. I'm not coming back to Africa. This place is conducive to my skin color. And I just posted that on my Instagram. My brother. You're like... See response. <laughs> see comment. People just, they like, they comment. They... Ah! I was like, ah! Oh. <laughs> So this is it. Like, oh, they've not heard it before. <laughs> okay, that's it. So what? Are, well, sorry, we're going to go. Did this get inspired by anybody? By people. something? By people? Plenty of people. Mostly, I'll maybe say teachers. Okay. Like maybe secondary. <laughs> that is so sad. Is so, I right? <laughs> Yeah, maybe like in secondary school, you know, your teacher would say, you know, like, you know the, the whole H factor thing. Yeah. It was my English teacher for my mother. <laughs> yeah, I know, I know. <laughs> you know, then, you know, we'll just, everybody would be messing around with that. And it was just something that, you know, I guess me and my sisters kind of share this this sense of humor. Yeah. So we really used to have Flowed. a lot of banter with that. So we kept it going. So you put out that one, you realize people like it, and then you started making it From conscious. then onwards, my brother, every video was scheduled, <laughs> <laughs> planned. I, I, I see me, I got to come up with concepts. I got, eh? I, <laughs> something where I don't plan, I don't know, I know. <laughs> Bro, the, f the very first one that scattered everywhere, that's what I said. I'm just a young man from Joruba here of Nigeria. I'm searching for a young lady, preferable yellow in color, somebody that shares the same hobbies with me. My hobbies is washing ball, uh, cashing phone. <laughs> I'm going to Night VG. Contact me on Facebook. I'm also on Pinging. Yeah. Never, forget <laughs> Never forget that, bro. Bro, I posted that. Everywhere went mad. Everybody was sending it to their uncle, to their father's sister's <laughs> mother. Coming, it would come back to me. Somebody was in my mother sent me my uncle. Everyone was watching. I was like, "Who is this guy?" At the time, I had portrayed. Well, apparently, I had portrayed this character 
so vividly that people kind of believed that that was that person. Oh yeah, I, my, my wife told me not too long ago. You know, she saw you on a show. I think it was like you on the spot when you came on Ebony Live TV. Mm, mm, yeah, mm, used to mm, be. Mm, yes, <laughs> I think it was on, 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 me on my show. And she said she watched. That was the first time she was seeing you speak. Yeah, and then you oh, did the oh, the oh. thing, and she said she was like, "Oh my god, yeah. <laughs> why does he talk like? This? Did he not go to school? <laughs> like she honestly <laughs> believed <laughs> you were like <laughs> that." <laughs> this thing, this exact same thing you said, I think it was really Helen Paul. Somebody was telling me how they literally were, were watching TV and they saw, and they just like started to pray for me, like, "Oh, oh my god, I hope he's okay." <laughs> <laughs> That, oh man, like she genuinely felt bad, you know. So I, <laughs> I, I that worry that. No, no, no. It was hilarious to me because, and for me, it's like, oh, thanks for the compliment. You mean I've played this character so convincingly? Oh, yeah. I'm happy. Yeah. So that was what it was for me. And you know, so I just kept on. Um, I did the one about oh, uh, if you if you taste my delicacy, you will be stuck on me. <laughs> I can't make him do meal and boy head. <laughs> Garlish it with Schnaden. Oh, bro. With then what? there was Schnaden. Schnaden. <laughs> <laughs> then there was the LOB era. Mm -hmm. Oh, man, bro. Yeah. I, skit. Skit on skit on skit. Ah, I've done skit. I've done skit. Ah, there was a time that Instagram didn't used to allow more than 15 seconds. Yeah, I remember you that. You will squeeze your creativity. It's like. <laughs> I remember that. <laughs> Why do you need more time? We we'll squeeze it. If I'm not laughing by the tenth second, but my brother, <laughs> we squeeze everything inside that fifteen seconds, and it was short, punchy videos, and they used to come like this, man. Those times, and I just really used to enjoy it. So it, I didn't even really feel under pressure. Yeah. You know, at that time, so early on as well, and you know, it just, you know, used to come like that, and um. So from then on, Sha, I think that was you know when people started to get to know know who I was who because were, yeah. another crazy thing about this time is that I watched my following, I legit watched my following grow because of this in a manner that I could not comprehend. In a, a normal person, <laughs> for that kind of self, if if he mad, because like maybe at the beginning, like maybe I was on like five thousand followers. Bro, I, I was watching like every new day. You have just been seeing notifications. <laughs> did that? Did that? Did that? Get to me? Accent? <laughs> no, whatever. Ever have a name? Was it a oh, personality? Because oh, 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 yeah, 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 Most yeah. times people would give a name. What was it? Yeah, I I used to call that character Brataju. Brataju. I remember Brataju's name. Brataju. Yeah, yeah Brataju. Um, but before I named him, I didn't. I never really. You know, I just used to. How do you think your career would have gone without Brother Taju? Like, take away Brother Taj mm. from your life. How do you think your career would have morphed? Hmm. Um, wow. Because the fundamental part of your life. Oh, for, for, oh, very fundamental. Can't deny that. You know, I didn't tell you about the, 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 the difficulties or let me say the issues that I had or challenges, if you like. At that time, I only told you about how it was, you know, at a point where it was, when it got to like here, I started to look around. What challenges? Uh, that's where that's where I'm going. Okay. I started to look around. I said, ah, Omo, we, we have run from point A to this point Z. But now that I look around me in this point Z, what do these people, or who do these people think I am? Do they think I'm a comedian? Okay. Am I a comedian? But I'm not really a comedian, no. I'm just making people laugh. So, what's going on? But also at this time, I know inside me that I really want this music shit. So, I kept telling myself, I'm a musician. You are a musician. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, I didn't remind my. You are a musician, my dear. Strong with you. What are you doing? So, at this time, I sat my manager down. I said, my brother, these are my concerns. Okay? 
I'm a comedian to, to these guys. But music is my shit. What are we going to do? Then strategy came into play. We now started saying, okay, let us plan. What can we do? Simple. You have this thing that they like. You have this thing that you want them to like. Why don't you use this thing to get this thing? Say, eh, okay, that's not bad. So from then onwards, I was very extremely intentional with tying whatever comic product I was putting out to a musical release. You know, so um, at the time I had a song, uh, at the time that everything was uh, was popping as well, coincidentally, I had a song that was really doing well as well, um, uh, Marry Me featuring Yemi Aladi and Po. See me see trouble, yeah. but I go, hey. So at that time I was like, oh, great. So I started something called the Marry Me Challenge. You know, there was there was a comic undertone to it, but I linked it back to the song Marry Me. So okay, you know, oh, so this challenge is for this song. Oh, cool. Oh, oh, this one I like the song. So people started, oh, this guy. Oh, now this guy. Oh, so he sings as well, <laughs> my dear. That's what I'm doing first. <laughs> that's the original. And it's not sings, it's raps. But <laughs> <laughs> anyone is okay as long as no amateur music, it's okay. So I started to, you know, then I had uh, uh, the Celebrity Girlfriend Challenge. I, I challenged you to that. I did Elo Bay Challenge. I had a song called Elo Bay. I had a Karishika. I had the song. Then I did a challenge around it. So all these things of like online, doing a challenge or doing something funny or doing, uh, that was, that's my story, bro. That's my story. That's how I climbed up. You know, that's how I climbed up. So challenge, all this thing, challenge here, challenge there. I, I do this for a living, bro. <laughs> so this way, uh, when in lockdown, I mean, of course, a lot of it too is is beyond you. To be honest, a lot of it is beyond you. But you know, this lockdown, when the whole Bob Daddy challenge thing uh, ticked off, and you know, it kind of pretty much scattered everywhere, and um, uh, you know, some people are like, ah, you know, ah, how did you do? It? But you know, this challenge thing is. Kind of like the trend. How you how you yeah built so, this? Yeah, it's like it's like the trend that I've been giving them since. So for me, it was just like, oh yeah, let's let me do another one. That this, you know, at the time, um, I think I saw um, the girls doing the makeup thing, and um, a friend of mine must have called me that. Not my manager must have called me that. Ah, more babes detention us with this makeup. I for me guys give them their own. Uh, that's when we started discussing. Now, I'm going to use Bob Daddy. Oh, I go mad. Oh. So, <laughs> in lockdown, I recorded my own video. You know, doing put it. I just put my song in. You know, doing uh, the the transformation thing. Put it out. I was like, guys, oh yeah, let's get it. I, my own intention was even, oh guys, let's respond to these girls that are tensioning us. Before I knew it, everywhere scatter, everywhere bust. Um, yeah. So, but pretty much. Um, like I said, the challenge thing, you know, was my intentional effort to marry my comedy yeah. with my music, you know, at that time. And it became like a way of life, just became a system that How was working consistently. Been. And, you know, I kept it going. Yeah. yeah. I, he I hear a lot of what you're saying, but I, I, I haven't heard anything about acting. Uh, uh. Is it fair to call you a player? Yeah. Like you? Because, I mean, yeah. no. it's, like I said, eight years is a long time. Mm -hmm. There's no way you're not getting some <laughs> in that time. Some of what, sir? You're not having sex. Sir, please, I, I don't funny case. I don't, please, I, I don't want this so, record. Hey, my mother is You're not in a relationship in eight years. You're definitely sexually active. I'm 30 years old. Are you a player? Uh, uh. Yeah. <laughs> I told you I'm the life for the party. Why your guys want to try to leave? Party. Why your guys want to try to leave? That be. It's here.